Hi, my name is Monica Treidlinger and I'm a trainer in Canada and today we're going to do a session on cross ties. I'll be working with a young warm blood stud colt who has been on cross ties but today we're going to be working on getting him more comfortable in the cross ties. Before we attach the horse, we're just going to have a look at the straps that are in the barn, which are the cross ties themselves that attach to the horse. This one end is uh, attached to the barn wall up, up, uh, up in one of the beams. This is not my barn, so I don't have a lot of say on how this is set up. I would prefer actually that this was attached with a baler twine, so that if something really nasty happened and the horse panicked and, and pulled back suddenly or reared and flipped over, the, uh, the baler twine would break and the horse would be released. Um, at this end that attaches to the horse's halter, we have panic snaps, which would let go um, with a lot of pressure on them. So if the horse pulled back suddenly, they are designed to let go, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen 100% of the time. So the baler twine gives you that added assurance that your horse will be released if something bad should happen. Okay, so here's our youngster attached on the cross ties. Um, he's a big boy, he's 15-2, uh, but he is only over a year old, so his mind is still uh, undeveloped. He's, he's still quite young, so his attention span is going to be very short. So we don't want to spend a lot of time doing this. We're going to spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes in total, although the video won't be that long in length. Uh, but I'm going to spend 10 or 15 minutes in total just helping him to adjust on the cross ties and find that spot that's most comfortable for him. Um, if you see here, he's, he's come a bit too far forward. And when he comes far, too far forward, there's a lot of pressure on his nose right here on the halter as the, the lines pull. There's also going to be some pressure if he goes too far back on his pole on the halter, which is on the top of his head. So he's going to be very uncomfortable. So I want to just help him to step back into position. So I'm just going to cluck, which means move your feet. When I cluck to a horse, I'm, I'm telling him to move his feet. And I'm going to just touch him lightly with the whip, tap him and ask him to move back, just to step back, to release the pressure in the line. And he'll learn eventually. Walk on. He thinks I have a treat in my hand because I'm holding the phone. Um, he's going to learn that uh, when he steps back, the line releases. I'm going to also, I can also pull back here on the lead shank, which is attached to the bottom of his halter, and help him that way also, and just ask him to back up into position. There we go. And you're a little mouthy stud colt, yes. Back on, there we go. And so now he's come forward again, and we'll just ask him again. So it's a lot of repetition, it's very tedious. There we go, good boy. He shifted, he's, he's pawing a little bit, but he did shift, so I'm gonna reward him with with the stop of the tap of the whip. And I still would like him to move back a little more, so I'm gonna take the line and ask him to just back up a bit. Good boy. So that's our starting point to get him loose so that those lines are drooping. Now he's come forward again, and it's because I'm standing here. I think he's coming forward to, to come closer to me because he thinks he's gonna get something. So I'm just gonna ask him to back up again. Back up, back up, back up. Good boy, good boy. Now he's come forward again, and I'm just going to give him a minute to see if he'll actually figure it out on, him, on his own, because he's feeling the pressure on his nose right now, and he may just decide to release it on his own and step back, because he's got his own little brain in there, and he can think. And there he goes. He took one step back. trying to find the right answer. So there's, there's slack on one side now and it's tight on the other. It's not too tight. That is probably more comfortable than it was, but he stepped back even a little more. Now he's shifting. And this is partly to his, um, his youth and his impatience. He, he's gonna have to learn to just stand there and relax. Okay, that's not too bad. I would like him, I, I would prefer him back further, so I'm going to actually ask him to step back again. Step back. Back up. Back up. Back up. Good boy. Good boy. And he's come forward again because I've backed away from him, so he's, he's following me, but um, 
we're going to see if he can again really learn it on his own and figure it out. Back up. I'm going to help you a little bit. Back up. That's a boy. There we go. So the other thing he should be doing is standing in the center of the hallway. He's, he's really right up against one wall, one wall right now. Um, I would like him to be a little more squared up. His front feet are actually quite nicely squared up. Um, one of the things we, um, we know about horses is when their heads are high, they turn on an adrenaline rush, which uh, it, it turns on a fight or flight instinct. Um, or response, I should say. If the head is lower, it triggers nice endorphins and the horse feels better. The same thing happens when the horse's feet are splayed, when they're not squared up. So to help him relax, we really want him to be squared on his front and as much as possible on his back. And also to drop his head just slightly so that uh, he's not got such a high head and he's not turning on that adrenaline rush. So we're going to help him do that as well. Okay, we're going to move you. So I'm just going to tap his bum to ask him to swing his hip over. There we go. Shifting. A little more. Big sigh. There. Good. And back up. Back up. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Back up. That's better. Good boy. Uh, uh, uh. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Good boy. So when he does the right thing, I just want to leave him alone. Give him a few minutes of peace and quiet. And he's moved back over again. I'm going to be annoying again and ask him to move again. Good, and back up. Good. And his feet aren't squared, but I'm just going to give him a minute because he actually isn't too, too bad in terms of where he's standing for the front, for the, for the cross tie release. But to get the endorphins, we'd like the, the feet to be squared up a bit better. Back up. Don't come forward. Back up. Good boy. And that's even better. That's that's nice for the... Now he's going back a little too far. He might come forward now to figure that out. But look at the feet are nicer. Even his back feet are somewhat squared. They're a little bit relaxed there. And his head is dropped, which is really good. And he hasn't held it, but he'll figure it out. This is the youth, the youth in him and his little brain. That's actually very nice too. His, uh, his feet are quite squared up there and his head's not too high. He looks pretty relaxed. And the line is, is released. But he stepped forward again and he's going to have to figure out that that's not the most comfortable position. And I can help him. Back up. Good boy. A little more. Good boy. There we go. And we'll just give you a minute. Now he's splayed again. You can see that his front feet aren't squared. So I'm going to actually ask him now to move that one foot. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And that's not bad. He's fairly squared up there. He's not too close to the wall. He's centered fairly well in the hallway. And the lines are nice and loose. And just to reward that, I want to just leave him alone, let him have a moment of peace and quiet. And with a little bit more repetition, like I'm, I think I'm going to end this session now because he's found it and this is good to, uh, to demonstrate this on the video, but with lots and lots of repetition of just doing this over and over again every time he's hooked up, it will teach him that this is the way to be and the place to be that, that works well on the cross ties. So this is our second session with the young stud colt. Um, we did a, an earlier session and he did find his, uh, his good spot at the end. And today we're going to see if he can actually remember how to do that. And I'll help him along the way. So now he's standing a little bit too far forward. And I'm going to tap with my whip to ask him to, to swing his bum over.
backing up on his own. That's very good. We'll just leave him for a moment. His feet are splayed, his front feet. So he doesn't have the endorphins happening as well as they could be. I'm going to ask him to move his bum over again just to straighten him out a little bit. very nice. His head is low, his feet are fairly squared up, so he's triggering some good endorphins to calm him down. Good boy. I like that. The lines are really nice and loose there. That's very nice. Let's see if you can hold that for a little while. Ah, just ruined it. Now, will you figure it out on your own and go back, or do you need some help? going to help you. There we go. And a little more. There we go. And now you've got nice squared feet. Not too bad. This one's a little bit forward. It could go back a bit or this one could come forward. Again, so we'll have to see if you can go back on your own. Do you notice that you're not in the right, the right spot? Can we help you? Back up. Good boy. Back up. Good boy. Very good. Very nice. Now he's going back a little bit too far, but he's realized it and he's come forward on his own. Good boy. And now we'll leave him alone again. Very good. And I think we'll leave it there. 